You know the book of Revelation, you will read <clears throat> that on the Lord's day, I was in the spirit, said John. Before you can experience God, before you can experience what the Lord is doing in the divine dimension, you have to first connect in the realm of the Spirit. Before you can cook anything, you've got to light the stove, right? If the fire is not there, it doesn't matter what ingredient you want to put in there, it's not going to work. So, don't focus on the time. Focus on connecting, alignment. When you begin to pray, you will sense an alignment with your, your spirit and God's spirit. And once that's established, prayer becomes much easier. There is a flow now. My friend, I'm telling you, nobody will teach you all this. But I'm trying to help you because I want to raise a, man, a people that know how to pray. How to touch the heart of God. How to receive His word. Some of you, I believe, have had an experience even this morning. In the, in the few minutes that we spent, I encourage you not to stop. Once again, I want to say, I beg you to pray at least an hour every day in the Holy Spirit. But not in a religious manner. But first, connect. I was in the Spirit. And then, John began to have this experience. And he wrote the entire book of Revelation. The Holy Ghost came. Then they spoke in tongues. The connection has to be made. Not religion. Amen? So please do not neglect to pray in the Holy Spirit. Every day. Tell your neighbor, pastor is telling you. Pastor is talking to you. Okay? Amen. Yes. And now you tell that person who just told you, Pastor is talking to you. Amen, amen, amen. <laughs> well, <laughs> I don't know how it can flow with two minutes and 22 seconds, <laughs> you know. <laughs> We've been dealing with the subject of um, learn of me, right? And I don't want to go back refresh too much, but I just want to say we discussed about or I taught about what Jesus was saying, cast your net in the deep. And we said every problem has a solution in the deep. The deep Call it unto deep. See, when it talks about the deep calling, it means you're calling from the depths of your heart. That is the core. It's the core of the man. You're calling unto God from the depths of your heart. So there is a location. As I said, you know, I said, knowledge is very important. Knowledge is extremely important. And all of us have to understand there is intellectual knowledge and there is spiritual knowledge. Even in Christendom, there is intellectual knowledge where you go to the seminary and you sit down and learn for three years, five years. You get your degrees, your doctorates and all that. That's great. And you need that kind of knowledge. It's good, but not enough. It's good, but not enough. Remember, I used a term last time, I think I said, there is a knowledge of the cosmos. Why is, you know, sometimes people think, if I just have spiritual knowledge, that's enough. I don't need anything about this world. Hang on a minute. Don't forget you're a spirit, but your spirit is locked in a body. And the body has to understand the knowledge of the cosmos. Or else, you're going to hurt yourself. So I know, I love God. God said, if I jump off a building, He will take care of me. Isn't that what the devil said to Jesus? But there is a knowledge in the cosmos that says there is a force or a law called gravity. 
If I'm not aware of that, I can't take advantage of that. As spiritual as I am, because I'm now placed in the earth and my body is functioning in the third dimension, I need the knowledge that is available in the third dimension. So it's important for every young man and every young woman to understand you don't go to school and to college just to get a certificate and then to get a job. You go to learn. You go to learn. We read about Daniel. Why? Two things. He was spiritual and he was also intellectual. He was not only wise in the matters of God, but he was wise in the governance of a nation. He was so smart in the natural intellectual knowledge that there was nobody even close to the wisdom he carried. That's why the Bible says but they were ten times better. Not just in the spiritual realm. So you need to understand that we need knowledge both. You cannot neglect either one of them. Both are important. Both are important. But as you know, you know, look at Joseph. Joseph was not only an interpreter of dreams. Joseph was not only a man who feared God. But as I said, God's word says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Genesis 42 verse 18, please. Genesis 42 verse 18. And Joseph said unto them the third day, This do and live, for I fear God. He was a man who feared God, so he was a man full of wisdom. So when Pharaoh called him and told him his dream, not only did he interpret the dream, but he gave them wisdom as to how to tackle what was going to come. He gave him a plan and a strategy to be able to cope with what was coming and not be swallowed up by the famine. And Pharaoh turned to the people of his administration and said, Can we find anybody with this kind of wisdom? He was not only impressed by the interpretation of the dream, but he was impressed by the way he could solve a problem in the three-dimensional world. He used the wisdom from the fourth dimension to, to, to solve the problem of the three dimension. And that's how you and I are supposed to live. Amen. This is why we need the knowledge of the Word of God. The greater knowledge of the Word of God, the greater confidence you have. Listen to me carefully. Why should I read the Bible? Why should I come to church and listen to a man preach or a woman preach? Because as I read the Bible and as I sit under the teaching, it gives me more understanding and I gather knowledge about God's wholesome wisdom, which is called Logos. When I'm not strong in the knowledge, which is what? Intellectual knowledge that is in this book. When I'm led in the realm of the fourth dimension and I have no knowledge of this book, you know what dangers we have? Even the devil can manipulate and come in as the angel of light and present himself as an angel. And if you're not founded on this word with proper understanding and knowledge, you can be deceived. There are many cults today in the world that have Bible as the foundation. Is that true? They've had visions. They've had uh, experiences. Undeniable. They're real experiences. But the problem is they never checked with this book. They began to say that what they experienced was more real than this book. This book contains the wholesome wisdom of God and the intent of God. The plan of God. The idea of God. So if I want to know God, I cannot know Him outside of this book. Because I'm dealing with the realm of the spirit where I can be easily deceived if I do not have parameters in which I have to move and learn. And this book, by reading, listening, hearing, meditating, and sitting under it, and listening to a man of God or a woman of God preach gives you more and more understanding and gives you illumination and, rev and understanding of what the real will of God is. See, some people will say, 
It is not God's will to heal everybody. Who told you that? Oh, but you know, Pastor, I know so many men of God, even during the healing revival of the 1960s and 70s, great men of God used greatly by the power of God to heal millions of people, they died of sickness. Do you know that? Many of them died of sickness. Does that change the word? No. Because we are human. So my point is, yeah, they were used of God, but they were still men or still women. And so they may not have known everything that has to be known. And God, and remember, revelation is progressive. We're not saying anything negative about those men or women because they were mightily used of God. They were men of God. They were vessels of God. And God blessed them for the revelation they brought to the body of Christ. And we thank them for, we thank God for them because they've given us an understanding that we would have never received without them. But hang on. Nobody is greater than what God has revealed in His book. So intellectual knowledge of this Bible is very important. You know what the Bible says? Do you know how the church grew? The Bible says in the book of Acts that when the church was established, they gathered together in homes daily. They broke bread and they taught the doctrine of the apostles. Hallelujah. The doctrine of the apostles, that means the doctrine was taught from the book. Because there was a lot of mixture that was coming in. Because some said, yeah, we believe in Jesus, but you also have to be circumcised. Some said, we believe in Jesus, but we can also drink blood and have polygamous relationships. Is that true? They were experiencing God. Let me tell you, church, they experienced the power of God. The, why do you think Paul wrote about the gifts in, the, in 1 Corinthians, in, in, the, in his first letter to the church in Corinth? There were many who came from pagan practices, pagan backgrounds, where they were working with demon powers. And in the demonology and demon powers, they moved in supernatural powers. So Paul had to clarify what the gifts of the spirit are and what the gifts or what are the operations of the devil are. Because some of them were moving in gifts and sleeping around all over the place. Living an unholy life. Are you able to understand what I'm saying? Some of them were moving in the gifts or so-called, I wouldn't say gift, so-called miraculous powers by living an unholy life. So Paul had to bring the correction and say, that is not what the Bible teaches. You cannot live an unholy life and do miracles and claim it's the power of God. It may not be the power of God. That's why I said, remember I said, there is a realm of the spirit in which not only God operates in the higher realm, but there's a lower realm of the demonic powers where power is prevalent, is available. That's the reason why when the magicians and the astrologers of Pharaoh came and they threw their stick, what happened? It became a snake. So don't tell me there are no powers in the demonic power, in the demonic world. So some of them, and even today, please be careful. That's why you should never run after miracles. Never run to places only where miracles happen and the word is not given importance. This word is what should establish you in him. Just because somebody is moving in the gifts of the spirit does not mean he's approved of God. Because there are people who are moving in the gifts of the Spirit, but are fornicators. I'm telling you. That are living adulterous lives. But they mesmerize people by the supernatural. And they deceive. And what happens? Watch this. What happens? When you are listening to me, 
This is very important. When you're listening to me, you're not just hearing my voice. You're catching my spirit. So if you come under a man or a woman who has these evil practices in life, and they move in supernatural manifestations, you not only hear their words, but you catch their spirits. That's why you, you work under a person who has had divorce in his life. Not one, but a few. You will end up having a divorce. It's not a joke. I'm telling you the truth. There is a spirit that everybody carries. So Paul had to address that and say, listen guys, nobody that is truly a believer can call Jesus accursed. That means there were some people that were saying Jesus is cursed. That means they were not giving the prominence that Jesus should be given. But they were saying, we too have powers. And they were misleading people. All his life, he had to battle with people. All through his ministry, he had to battle with people that said, we too believe in Jesus, but you need to be circumcised. The Bible doesn't say that. The Bible said we had a, we had a conference. And the leadership of the church, along with the Holy Ghost, have come to a conclusion. And that is, you will not drink blood and you will not fornicate. Correct? Because that was a very prevalent practice in that day. In the Roman Empire, it was a very adulterous nation. That period of time, morals and ethics during that time were very low. It resembles today. Church, please understand. Jesus said, come unto me, I will give you rest. Learn of me and you will find rest. There's a difference. Learning the word. That's why as a church we endeavor. I, I encourage, I motivate all of you to do the courses. We have the foundation course. We have, we have the prayer course. We have the Bible studies. We have the Bible courses. Right now we're advertising that our first module in-person Bible school will start on the 19th of this month. So please, I encourage you, if you have not done the first module, please come and meet Pastor Sam. He will give you more information. It's going to be in person because when you do in person, let me tell you, there is not only word, but there is a transference of something. And there is something you can pick up with when it is in person than it is on Zoom. So I would encourage you. I mean, we will continue the online stuff. But I want to encourage you to come into a classroom where you can be taught. But please take advantage of this because we are trying to raise not babies but men and women of God. Amen. And you cannot grow strong without the Word of God. I don't care what your profession is, what your position is in, the, in this world, where you stand and how you're respected in the world. That's none of my business. I'm a pastor. You're my sheep. And I have to teach you. That's my responsibility. I want to care for you. So, I have to close here. I want you to take you deeper into another aspect of the blood. We'll do that next week. But I want to say this. We need the intellectual knowledge of the word as well. And then, we also need the spiritual knowledge. We'll discuss that further. Were you blessed this morning? Or were you confused? Was it okay? Well, bless the Lord. Amen.